Now that we've finished the follow and uh, unfollow buttons, we're finally ready for the pinnacle of our sample application, which is a working status feed. Uh, the status feed combines uh, some fairly advanced Rails, Ruby, and even some SQL programming techniques. So it all comes together in the feed. Because this material is fairly advanced, it's re a really good idea to get a sense of where we're going by looking at a mock-up. So let's take a look at, at this homepage feed mock-up. So remember that the feed will consist of micro posts belonging to a, a particular user, in this case uh, Calvin, as well as the micro posts of the users that Calvin's following here, Hobbs and, and Smith. So let's take a look at what that means from a data model perspective. So uh, this is a, a diagram of the micro posts uh, table you might see in a real application. And here we've got user ID 1 and user ID 2, 7, 8, 10, and then again uh, a 2. So this is the user feed for a user with ID 1 who's following users 2, 7, 8, and 10. And so what we want to do is somehow grab out of this, this micropost table a feed of micropost IDs, in this case just ID 1, ID 2, ID 4, and so on, and then also have the ID of that user so that we can uh, put their information uh, in, in the feed. So the challenge of this section is to write code that implements this, uh, this process of pulling out just the micropost corresponding uh, to users being followed. We're going to plan to uh, use a method on the micropost model called from users followed by. And the idea is that it will look something like this. Let's take a look at micropost. I'm just going to use this file as a scratch pad right now. We're going to say micropost dot from users followed by. And then we're going to give it an argument that's a user. So this will return the micropost corresponding to users followed by the given user, as well as the posts of the user itself. So let's get rid of that for now. And let's write some tests for this. We can describe this uh, new method from users followed by. And well, let's, f let's first of all just get it started by saying it should um, have a from users followed by method. So this is a class level method. That means that micropost is a class dot should respond to from users followed by. By the way, this is one of those areas where having the escape completion in TextMate is a lifesaver. So let's save this. And we should be red. And now, since this is a class method, it, we're going to define it with the self keyword. Remember, in this context, self is the actual class. So self dot from users followed by, and it's going to take a user, and then we're going to do some stuff. <laughs> so this is about as far as we can get without some uh, some serious work. So now I'm going to write a series of pending specs just describing what we really want this uh, method to do. So it should include the followed user's micro posts. It should also include the user's own micro posts. And it should not include an unfollowed user's micro posts. In order to fill in these pending specs, we need to have a before each block here and set up some, uh, some existing data. So let's put in, uh, well, let's see, what have we got here? We've got an at user already from this line up here. So we've got at user. Let's make another user. Other user is a factory user. And let's make a third user. And let's make a post for at user. Let's say at user post 
is equal to at user dot microposts dot create bang. Remember, we can create through the association. Content is let's just say uh, foo. And let's make posts for the other uh, two users as well. So other post, third post. Say foobar baz, just for clarity. And now let's have the user follow the other user, but not the third user. At user dot follow bang. At other post, oh, at other user. There we go. So let's save that just to make there no, make sure there are no syntax errors. Good. So we've got three pending specs. And now in this test, it should include the followed user's micro posts. Let's say do micro post dot from users followed by at user dot should, let's put this on the next line, dot should include at other post. So since at user is following at other user, uh, it should, I'm sorry, it's not uh, other user, it should other post. So mi micro post dot from users followed by at user dot should include at other post. And here it should, it's the same thing, except instead of other post, it's user post. And then here we want to say micro post dot from users followed by at user dot should not include thir at third post. So let's save this. We should definitely be red because we've just got this blank method here. So these are tests for the from users followed by method, uh, but what we really want is the feed method. So in the user model, remember we have this proto feed from the last lesson. And so we can, we can uh, implement this really easily by just saying micropost dot from users followed by self. And you may recall that we actually have some feed tests as well. So let's take a look at where the feed is. So we do have some status feed tests. Oh, and I just realized we've got a mistake in here. Here we've got it should should have a reverse relationships method. So let's remove that second should. Okay, so now we've got our status feed. And we, we've got two cases. We've got it should include the user's micro post and it should not include a different user's micro post. Uh, now let's add in the idea that it should uh, it should include the micro post of followed users. So let's add in an extra test here. Make a followed user and then MP three equals uh, micro post factory. User is the followed user. And now the uh, user feed should include this third micro post, MP three. save that, save this, and we should be green, or we should be red again. Good. So we've got a full specification now for what the, the feed should be. So these tests are really quite good. If we can find something that actually passes these tests, then uh, we can be pretty confident that we've got a working feed. Now, because uh, getting the feed working is uh, fairly tricky, we're going to build it up layer by layer. So let's just uh, open up a, a scratch pad here. Let's take a look at the kind of SQL uh, we might want. Now, whether you've uh, done a lot of SQL programming or not, you should be able to guess from this uh, more or less what it's doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to select star from the micropost table, and we're going to subject it to certain conditions. Where the user ID, remember the user ID is the foreign key, is in some list of IDs. That's this idea that uh, we want all the micro posts corresponding to a list of IDs, which are the IDs of the 
uh, users followed by a given user. So we want these are the micro posts for the users followed by a given user, and then we also want to include the uh, micro posts for the user himself. So or user ID equals user, the, the user ID. So I'm using these angle brackets just indicate schematic things that aren't valid SQL. And so here we've we've guessed that there's an in keyword in SQL that lets that lets us test the inclusion of uh, an, an integer here in a list of integers. So this is a set inclusion test, and happily, in fact, SQL does support exactly such a keyword. So you may recall from uh, the last lesson that we implemented the proto feed uh, we, we're using a line. Actually, we just uh, we just changed it. Let's let's go back. It's in user.r. It's it's this. I'm just going to command Z my way back. We use micropost.where user ID equals question mark ID. So let's. So, so this is the code that we used for our proto feed, and the question mark here uh, causes the ID to be escaped, which actually does nothing in, in the case of uh, an integer, but uh, it's a really good idea in general to escape SQL. And so in this case, we're going to do micro post dot where something like user ID, let's put it in a string, in and then we're going to say some interpolated value of followed IDs. Or user ID equals the, uh, the user ID. And it, it turns out that we can uh, use the entire object, user, instead of, uh, instead of just the ID. So we don't have to do user.id here. This is the where clause that you would, you would use in, uh, in Rails that's equivalent to this select star for microposts. Um, so at this point, we've gotten everything working except for this. We need to, the challenge now is to find this, uh, this list of followed IDs. So if you think about it, the followed IDs are just the IDs of user.following. And so if we can somehow build up a list or an array of those users, then we ought to be able to uh, do this interpolation. So let's open up a console user.first.following is a bunch of users, but what we can do is we can call map on this. Map, and then we can say uh, user, this is the block variable in the vertical bars, user.id. And so those are the IDs. And you may recall that there's a shorthand for this that is now part of Ruby, although it started as only part of Rails. Ampersand, and then we can give it a symbol that is the thing that you know, the method that should be called on each element in the collection. So that's exactly the same thing. And it turns out that in SQL, what you need to do is not have this array, but rather have a string that is a, a list of numbers joined by commas. So we can use the join method on, on an array here and join on comma space. So this is exactly the thing that we need to interpolate um, into this followed ID. So let's go around um, to this micro post, and we can say followed IDs equals user dot following dot map ampersand ID dot join comma space, and then we can say where. So remember, we're inside the micro post model, and self in this case. Uh, is the actual uh, class. So we don't have to put um, self.where. This, this is micropost.where. But inside, the, in, inside a class method, we can omit it. So we can say where. This is going to return where user ID in followed IDs or user ID equals question mark user. So let's save this. I mean, this is really, you know, this is an implementation that has some chance of working. Let's save it and see if somehow we're green, how uh, we're red. Let's take a look at what's broken. Okay, and the reason we're red is because I'm an idiot, because um, at other post should be uh, assigned to the at other user. So, and this is at third post. Okay, so now let's see if we're green. 
Oh, at third user. There we go. I'm really too stupid to live here, but I'm going to be green in just a moment. Look at that. It's green. OK, let's take a look at the user. This is also going to be green, I hope. Nope. Take a look at the user spec. Oh, and here what happened is we forgot to follow the user at user.follow bang followed. Oftentimes TDD involves this sort of thing where you're sort of going back and forth and you say, well, you know what, this should be passing and it's not. So this is great. Let's take a look at this. It looks like we may be passing. Are we green? We're all green, so this is a working feed. Now, we're not quite done with this yet, but this is a huge step because we have a working feed and we have passing tests. So now we are free to refactor and we can be confident that uh, once we've uh, gotten a refactored version of this that's still green, that it will still be working. Um, one of the reasons to, to do a naive implementation like this, as we'll see, this is quite naive, um, is just to get it working. And you can see that there were actually a couple of red tests there uh, because I made some mistakes in, uh, in the test suite itself. But this is great. Like Now we've got something that is, is not particularly error prone. This is a very straightforward uh, feed, relatively speaking, um, as long as you know about this in keyword. And so now we can feel free to refactor it. And the reason we want to refactor it is that if there were a lot of users being followed, this line here would actually pull all of the IDs into memory for all of the users being followed. So if the user is following 5,000 users, it gets pulled into this big array in memory, and then it gets interpolated as some huge array. In fact, it's even worse than that. The followed IDs line actually pulls the entire user.following array into memory, which involves instantiating a potentially very large number of active record objects, which is expensive both in terms of CPU cycles and in terms of memory. So it would be really nice if we could come up with a, a more efficient way of doing this that could push that subselect, that selection of the followed IDs, into the database. So that's the uh, goal of this last section. So in order to do this, we're going to expand on the notion of scope that we mentioned earlier. So here's a default scope. But scope is a much more general idea. And so I'm going to show you an example of how this works. Uh, suppose I were to put in the, in the user model uh, something to this effect. Suppose I said scope admin where admin is true. What this does is it gives us an admin class method, effectively, that allows us to pull out all the admins in the database because those, that's exactly who uh, satisfies this criterion. So let's take a look at that. So you can see user.admin pulls out an array, in this case with only one element, consisting of the first user. Of course, you could do this with a class method if you, if you did uh, something like, then you could you know, do a find in here. Uh, but that doesn't work as well because uh, scope is more powerful. You can actually chain things um, in, with, the, with this scope. So for example, if you did user.admin.paginate, there's only one of them here, but you could still do paginate page say is one. So all kinds of great things happen when you when you scope a model. This is a really powerful way to uh, to list say recent articles if you've got some sort of blog or if you have comments that have been flagged as possibly inappropriate, you could have an inappropriate scope or and so on. In this case, we're going to get rid of this admin scope. In the micro post model, we're going to have a scope for from users followed by. So you notice that we essentially could uh, replace that uh, idea of a self.admin method in the user model uh, with just an admin scope. Here we've got a self.from users followed by method. We can replace this with a scope. Scope from users followed by. And now we need a where clause. And it turns out that uh, we, need, we need to do something a little bit more advanced because um, the where clause in this case, you can notice down here, we're essentially going to hoist this up into the scope. Um, this where clause needs a user, though. And what that means is that we need to wrap this in a lambda. And it's a lambda that takes a block variable, which is a user. And so we're going to push the where clause down into a method called followed by. This can be a private method. 
since it's only used internally to the class. And remember, the idea is that if, if it can be made private, it should be made private. So we're going to call this followed by. And now if we were to leave this as is, this would be a method on a micropost object. But we actually want this to be a class method, because there is no uh, micropost object at this point. Self.followedByUser. And now we need to, uh, to put this where clause in here. So let's do our refactoring. We can actually just grab this stuff here. So what we're doing now is we're refactoring this, and at each stage, we're going to make sure we're still green. So let's save that. That's good. Now, before moving on to this next step, uh, let me introduce an alternate notation for this question mark SQL escaping. So what this does, as I mentioned before, is escape this uh, user ID. And in, indeed, in general, it escapes any sort of SQL when it gets interpolated into this string. And so we can replace this question mark with essentially a symbol inside the string, colon user ID, so user underscore ID. And then we just need to use that same value as a hash key. And now the user ID inside here will just be the user's ID. Again, Rails knows to convert this user into a user ID. This is exactly the same as we can see by saving it. It will still be green, except that now we can use this user ID variable in multiple places. And as we'll see momentarily, we're about to use it inside this followed ID string. So let's take aim at this line here. As I mentioned before, this user.following is an array of all the users that a particular user is following. And this line arranges for all of those users to be uh, instantiated in memory. So it's a very expensive uh, operation computationally. So what we're going to do is push that operation into the database using what's called a subselect. So we're going to turn this followed ID string, which is currently just um, a bunch of IDs, into an actual SQL select. So let's uh, use the percent paren notation that we mentioned briefly in chapter 4. Recall that this is convenient if you want to put double quoted strings uh, inside another string without escaping them, while also being able to interpolate things. The reason we're using it here is because this percent paren notation lets you break a string across a line. And that will allow us to format this SQL string a little more nicely. So what we want to do here is select from the relationships table all of the followed IDs, that's what this is, followed IDs, where the follower ID is this same user ID. That's essentially what we had before with the map, except now we can actually do it in the database and nothing will ever be pulled into Ruby. So we can say select followed ID. This will just select all the followed IDs, so this will automatically be an array, essentially. Select followed ID from relationships. And here I'm capitalizing the SQL keywords, and then I'm not capitalizing things that we've defined. So followed ID is a column, relationships is a table. So we want to select followed ID from relationships where the follower ID is the user ID. So you may have noticed here that SQL uses a single equal sign where Ruby would use a double equal sign. So here again, you can see we've used this user ID variable. So when this followed IDs string gets interpolated right here, we'll have another colon user ID. And so that'll get filled with whatever the user ID actually is. Now, by pushing this select into the database, we essentially reduce this problem to a very simple set inclusion, which is exactly what databases are great at. So this is quite an efficient operation. And we can take a look at the whole SQL query, just to get a sense of it. Let me just show you effectively what we're going to be doing. We're essentially selecting everything from the micropost table, where user ID is in the subselect. Select followed ID from relationships, where follower ID is equal to 1. So this little bit of SQL is essentially the same as uh, the map that we saw before. And then, of course, we've also added or user ID equals 1 because we want to include the users on microposts. So let's save this and see if we're still green. Good. So we see that the micropost tests are still passing. And now if we rerun the entire test suite, uh, if it's still green, uh, we can be pretty confident that we've got a working feed.
And look at that, we're completely green, which means we've got a working feed. So let's take a look at it. And here it is. This is all of the posts posted by the users being followed by the given user. Now, because of the way we created them, they're all bunched up together. They're not uh, intermingled. This is because of the way our sample data uh, is created. But this is pretty amazing. So there's one more thing I want to draw your attention to. This is just a, an example of how awesome scopes are. Let's look in the pages controller and recall how we're pulling these feed items out. These feed items are coming from the current user dot feed dot paginate. And so that feed is coming from here. The feed is micropost dot from users followed by self. So that goes into the micropost model and that hits the from users followed by scope, which hits, which has a lambda, which goes into this private method. But notice that our pagination links work just fine. So what's going on here is that this paginate here in the pages controller is reaching all the way into the micropost model. And it is adding a limit to this query that pulls the, uh, the users out 30 at a time. In fact, we can look at our log here. Let's take a look at this. It's hard to find the query in the server log, but uh, we can uh, do one better by uh, going to the console and uh, tailing the development log. So tail-f log development log. Let's clear this. And if let's do user.first.feed. Look at this. Look at this to begin with. So you can see here: select micropost.star from micropost where user ID in select followed ID from relationships where follower ID equals one or user ID equals one, and then this is the default scope order by micropost created out descending. This is from here. So now let's take a look at a paginated version of this. Dot paginate. Let's give it the second page say pages two. So you can see that we've got the same basic query. We're selecting all the micro posts from the micro post table where user ID is in uh, the set of IDs or user ID equals one order by micro post created at descending limit 30 offset 30. So the limit 30 says only pull out 30 at a time. Offset 30 makes, makes it the second page. So if you did page three, it's going to be offset 60, and so on. By the way, you'll notice a minor difference. Instead of selecting star, we select micropost.star um, from micropost. That's the kind of difference that doesn't really matter. But if you want to learn the kind of um, SQL that Rails is actually executing under the hood, you can always tail the log and, and see what's going on. So that's it. That is our working application. We now have a tiny Twitter clone that lets us uh, make posts and follow users and uh, see a feed of their micro posts. So this is really quite an amazing accomplishment um, given that we started out not even knowing how to make static pages in Rails. So Ronnie Mueller, go to home.